Hi everyone, my name is Avinash and uh, in this video I am going to discuss how we can connect to our RDS database by using IAM authentication. Alright, so generally whenever we are creating a database and as a standard process like after selecting this DB engine, the required version. So here observe, we have to give identifier name and master username and password. So most of the times what we will do, we will give this master username and we are going to set this password. Okay, along with this username and password, we do have an option to set up this IAM database authentication. So if you are using this IAM database authentication, so whatever the IAM user we have, that user can authenticate by using a temporary token, then he can log in to the database and uh, we can perform regular operations. All right, so that is what I'm going to explain. I already created a database. So the only thing is I have set up this uh, regular username and password for this database. So, uh, but I just enable this IAM DB authentication. If you observe this database, if we go to uh, this configuration, IAM DB authentication is enabled. So make sure this option is enable if you want to use IAM DB authentication. So, as a first thing, if you want to use this IAMDB authentication, you need an IAM user with access key ID and secret access key. Also, he should have valid policy. So before creating a user, I'm going to create an IAM policy. So I will break down this into multiple parts. First, create a policy that allow to connect to RDS, so that is the first thing. Second, create an IAM user with programmatic access. So then third, log into RDS using admin credentials and create a user to use IAM authentication. So once this is completed, we have to like uh, download a uh, CS cert. So once that is completed, then we can generate a token. So basically these tokens works for 15 minutes. It act as a password, then connect as new IAM user using token so these are the steps i'm going to perform so first let's create a policy i'm navigating to policies click on create policy and uh, what service for what service you are creating policy just search for rds you can see this rds iam authentication select that rds iam authentication if you expand here under permission, you will have only one option that is connect. Whether you are selecting this or whether you are selecting just connect doesn't matter. So now you want to connect to any cluster for any user you select all. Otherwise simply select specific. So I want to go with this specific option. Click on add ARN. So now in what region your resources are. So I'll to whatever the user I'm going to attach this policy, that user can connect to the resources I have in this region. I'm giving AP South 1 and resource DBI uh, resources. So that is nothing but our database. See, this is our database, right? When you go to configuration part, you can see an option called resource ID. So copy that resource ID then give that here so if you have multiple you can provide multiple arns also you can simply go to text and you can give all the arns in this format okay or you can manually configure one by one i have given this resource dbi resource here and which user i'm going to create a user with name called avinash 
okay so then click on add arn see if you want to go with wild card options say um, in ap south one region mumbai region i want to allow any resource to get connected by this avinash user okay otherwise i want to allow anyone to connect so we can use wild cards also here so i am good with this this i want to like you know limit the access to one specific database for one specific user only then click on next policy name uh, rds iam authentication is the name i have given create policy all right a policy created okay so we have not attached this policy to any resource so i'm going to quickly create an iam user for this iam user i'm going to attach the policy click on create user username i'm going to call this user as a, a rds iphan auth is a username management console if you really want you can give see that is not a big matter now i'm not going to use any management console rds authentication click on next attach policy directly whatever the policy we created i am attaching to this user now all right user created so as i told you i am going to generate access key id secret access key for this user programmatic access so for that go to security credentials and here you observe we have access keys create access key select command line interface i understand then click on next then create access key option all right i got the required access key and here is a secret key so we need this information to be in safer side i'm going to download this uh, to my local device all right so we have an iam user that iam user has newly created policy all right um we generated access key and secret access key as well so now as i told you right we need to create a user in database see uh, whatever the user we created here this uh, rds authentication user is this user and user name is going to be used in database no so this user or this programmatic credentials are going to use to get a temporary token so however a database level definitely you need to create a user database level you have to create a user and to log in as that user you are going to get a temporary token by using the iam user that is what the iam authentication logic is so now i'm going to get connected to this database so to get connected to it obviously we need some kind of resources right so i already launched an ec2 instance here i'm going to connect to this ec2 instance All right if you have any workbench kind of thing you can use that but i'm using an uh, ec2 instance sudo space su and make sure your database security group is opened with appropriate uh, uh, port number so that ec2 instance should able to communicate this is a security group and uh, currently it is opened with this specific network only so i cannot i may not get connected to that uh, ec2 from that ec2 instance so for now time being i am just opening for everyone save rules i know that is not uh, much secured option but uh, temporarily let's open that so now okay so we have to install mysql client within this machine i am just giving yeah i'm install mysql i fun y click on enter all right so the installation happening all right installation completed so now how to get connected to this database as i told you we have to get connected to this database okay and uh, we have to create the required user so currently i'm going to use my master credentials to get connected to the database so i'm going to give mysql hyphen h that is nothing but host name 
So copy the host name, paste it here. iPhone U is nothing but username that is admin. iPhone P, I'm leaving it blank and port number is 3306. Let's click on enter, it's asking for the password. So password I have given Aurora 12345. All right, you see here, I got get connected to this database from my EC2 instance. So this is regular connectivity process only. Okay, so now I'm going to create a user that I can use with this IAM authentication. So for that, first create a user and that username is Avinash, the same as the one we configured in the policy. And I'm going to give permissions on uh, all schemas and I'm going to enable SSL uh, certificate uh, for this user then I'm going to flush the privileges that is what I'm going to do here okay first let's create the user he got created so then grant all the permissions so then I'm going to execute the remaining also. All right. So all four completed. So technically we have created a user called Avinash within our database and we have given, prov we provided required permissions and we are enforcing that user to use SSL cert. Now you are good to exit. All right. So we created required user. Now, as I told you, we need some SSL, right? So basically, uh, we have to download a certificate. Whatever the RDS cluster you are going to launch, here it is going to contain one uh, certificate. Where, where is that certificate? We can observe somewhere here. Um, I know whenever you are modifying, uh, we can find that you see here this is a certificate authority so that uh, we need the required uh, supported certificate for that so go to this location and here we have multiple options you can download certificate for all the regions or region specific one also if you are uh, from mumbai you look for the mumbai one and you download or if you don't want to go with that uh, individual uh, regions ones you can simply download this all right what i'm doing i'm going to download this directly to my ec2 instance i'm using double get and i'm giving that uh, url the basically format is spam format and the file got downloaded give ls you hear give ls the file is here this file we are going to use when we are connecting by using IAM authentication method. All right, as I told you, if we want to get connected uh, using uh, this uh, IAM authentication, we have to generate a token. So what is the command we have to use to generate the token? You see here, this is a command, AWS space RDS. It's basically CLI command. Generate DB authentication token. So then host name, then it is asking for the uh, like we have to provide the host name and what port number it is running what region it is running what username it is so we have to provide this information now copy that command execute that here click on enter and what it is saying it's saying you have not configured any credentials so now whatever the access key id secret access key we created that we need to configure it here so otherwise it the CLI command won't work. So I'm giving AWS space configure, then it is asking for access key ID. I'm providing that, then asking for secret access key, then give that as well. Default region, you can leave it none, or most of the time, all my CLI commands or resources or Mumbai region, I'm giving AP South iPhone 1. Output format none or JSON or a table, you can give anything. I'm going with none. All right, so we have configured the user. See, if you observe that user settings, this user is now configured. He has permission to authenticate to the database. So 
if you go here if you are rerunning same command click on enter and you see we got this authentication token so this you can use as a password when you are connecting all right so how we can use that so let me paste that here again we should treat all this as a single line so a single entry so now this command you have to provide this one you have to provide okay so mysql host name you gave your host name so on what port number it is running and whatever the certificate ssl certificate right the one you downloaded that you have to pass here and what is the username and what is a password so as we whatever token we generated here that we should pass it as a password here so let's uh, combine this as a single command now let's copy all this paste it here click on enter and you can see here we have successfully get connected to this database so we are not using uh, any directly db username and password and whatever the token we generated right this token is going to work for only coming 15 minutes after 15 minutes we should generate another token and we have to use it and again you might get it out hey avinash do we really need to generate and do we need to copy and paste this see we can do that but what we can do we can pass this information as a variables okay see i can take this host name as a host variable whatever the token we are passing here for password i can take it as a token variable and then i am going to use that here in this command so let's do that now so i am going to set up a variable where host is equal to my rds host name and whatever command we have executed here to generate the token simply same command i am giving it here so let's copy this token and paste it here now so whenever you are executing this so in place of this token whatever we got output here it is going to placed automatically post whatever the one we set up here it is going to pick automatically here so you can copy that command and you can paste it here so you can observe here we got connected see instead of providing this lengthy url okay we are passing this as a like a token we are passing this host name this endpoint name as a host variable all right so this is how exactly we can get connected to our database by using iam db authentication i hope you found this video helpful so please take a minute and subscribe to my youtube channel and um, see you again in next video thank you guys